We go up here. Notice that as I move the playhead in the timeline, it's also moving up here. These are two different views of the same thing. So I'm going to put my playhead where I want a keyframe to be, and I click the position thingus. It's a little stopwatch. Several things happen at the same time. First, it creates a keyframe. That diamond shape represents a keyframe. Second, and for those of you that have seen Final Cut 7, this you should recognize. This allows us to move to the previous keyframe. This allows us to move to the next keyframe. And this indicates that the playhead is parked on a keyframe. Then I hit the up arrow key and I move back to the very beginning of the frame. And I create a second keyframe by clicking on it or by changing one of these parameters. I always, I'm, I'm like a belt and suspenders kind of guy. I want to both create uh, the keyframe and make sure it's at the right spot. And now watch what happens. I'm going to click, hold, and drag on position. And I'm going to drag the word texture until it disappears, just outside the frame, right there. Now to make this really slow and easy, I'm going to use the arrow keys. And I'm arrow keying in, and it moves from its starting position just off screen to its ending position at the second keyframe. And because I set the second keyframe where I want the effect to end, adding the transition in becomes really, really easy because all I had to do is to set one parameter, which is to say start it off screen. And I've animated the text. If you want the word texture to come on screen faster, you just grab your keyframe and move it earlier. The distance between keyframes determines how long that effect is going to take. You want to change a keyframe, click, hold, and drag it. Now it's going to take forever for that text to appear. You want to fly in so quick people don't even notice it, drag the keyframes quite close together. And if you need more space up here, type the plus key. The plus key allows you to zoom into allows you to zoom into the keyframe area the same way the plus key allows you to zoom into the timeline or the plus key allows you to zoom into the, um, uh, the program monitor. And again, we'll just drag this over to make it even faster. Again, spacebar. Whoop, there it comes. What's, what, let's make this even more interesting. I'm going to put a, play, I'm put a uh, keyframe here for scale, so we'll click the stopwatch. And we'll jump to the next keyframe and click a keyframe here. I want to have the video start at 50% size. And then I want to have it get bigger. So let's see what happens. It's at 50% size. I've got to scale it a bit down. Spacebar. Come, whoa, look at that. It comes in at 50% size, and then as soon as it's fully in the frame, it zooms up both in size and in position. This is the second really big secret of working with keyframes, and that is that you almost always are combining effects. I'm changing the position and I'm changing the size. I'm changing the position and I'm adjusting opacity. I'm changing the size and I'm adjusting opacity. Let's just do another one. So I go back to this keyframe here. I'm going to add an opacity keyframe. Click the stopwatch. That sets a keyframe. Go back to here and set this level to zero. When I do, as soon as I change a parameter, it sets a keyframe. So I can either set, I start, set the starting keyframe by clicking the stopwatch. I can then add additional keyframes either by clicking the open diamond or by changing a parameter. And keyframes are always set at the position of the playhead. Now, I'm going to use the arrow keys to move slow. It's faded to total transparency. It fades in and enlarges. So looking at the entire effect, done. 